a, a very brief analysis that I think will help you understand what it's supposed to be, go to www.lloydpyllloydp com, LloydPie.com, and right there on the front page you will see a, a, a photo of a, a drawing of a human being with a gorilla face, uh, a, excuse me, a chimp face melded into it. It's like two, two, uh, two stuck together. It's, it's very arresting. And click on that link and it will take you over and what you will see is a, a down-looking view of an Aust- a typical Australopithecus skull mm-hmm. and a typical early Homo skull, Homo habilis, Homo erectus, like that. The, these are all considered to be prehumans. And one of the great mysteries of of anthropology, it, 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 the evolution they call it of anthropology, is how did they go from the Australopithecines to the early Homos? Because they're very different. And as you'll see on on that page again, LloydPie.com, and click over um, on the link that you see there. It's such a huge difference, and there, there's no transitions between them. It mm. just you have the one, and then you have the other, and there's such a big gap. So they've always needed a missing link there. In the same way, they've needed a, a missing link between Neanderthals and Cro-Magnons. When they say missing link, that's what they're talking about, between Neanderthals and Cro-Magnons, because the difference between a Neanderthal and a Cro-Magnon is every bit as big as the difference between the Australopithecines and the early Homos. So it's like, how did it happen? How how could it have evolved? How could it be a, a result of evolution, of gradual evolution, when you have one type of creature and then suddenly you have another type of creature that is vastly different. Mm. It's not a transition that evolution calls for. It's a transformation. And the same thing happens again when you go from the, the prehumans up through the Neanderthals to Cro-Magnons, which are early humans. You have another of those trans- transformations. So what they're trying to say about this new discovery is that it's going to fit in between the two. So if you, if you look on the, the link that we have there, you'll, we, we put a little grayed out thing saying, you know, is this going to fit in here? Is this going to actually be something that, that shows attributes of both? And, and it remains to be seen because none of us have seen, um, seen a picture, you know, pictures of it yet. Mm-hmm. But for those of you who are listening and who might want to check that out, all, and, and all of this kind of stuff about human origins is discussed in my book, Everything You Know is Wrong, um, which is you, you know, easy, easy enough to get, I think, on uh, Amazon.co.uk. Are are in the in the states through um, iUniverse.com, but that's that's where I talk about all of this, and uh, and I'm just as as strong on these these human origin issues as I am on the uh, on the Star Child. These are all things that science needs to address, needs to deal with, but don't want to because it's going to cost them the precious to them idea that humans evolved on Earth along with everything else, which is patently not true, which is obviously not true, and there is a lot of evidence to indicate that we are a genetically engineered species that was put here only about 200,000 years ago. Mm. And, and that's what my book, Everything You Know is Wrong, is all about. But I'm not the only one who says this. You know, the work of, of Von Daniken and, and Zechariah Sitchin and, and, and many others. Mm. But People, if they're not aware of these of these ideas, should make themselves aware of them because they're absolutely fascinating. If you're into alternative knowledge, to me, there's nothing more interesting and nothing more fact-based and defensible than than this theory of, of intervention theory. Exactly, absolutely, and uh, so that, that'll be exciting in moments as well, Hannah. Uh, later in the week here, then on about Thursday when they announce this stuff and see what they. Whip up right. there and see if there's any <laughs> any validity to it. Uh, what what do you expect? Or w- will it be another you know just another Lucy so to speak? Or what do you think they, they will, mm-hmm. will look yeah, like? Yeah, it's going to be. What I understand is it's go, it's as, as complete as Lucy, if not more so. It's a very complete child skeleton, mm. and I really don't know what they're going to say and how they're going to spin it to make it look human. They always do everything they can to shoehorn those prehumans like Lucy and like the Lake Turkana boy and, and like everything up through Neanderthals. They do their best to make them seem like incipient humans, 
because it's important for those creatures to to appear in the minds of ordinary people to be humans, even though every physical attribute of them is not human except the fact that they walk upright. If you take away the upright walking part of it and you, you've got upright walking chimps, everything about those creatures, and that goes right through Neanderthal, is, is chimp-like. It's prime, well, let's say primate-like. Mm-hmm. It's, they, are, they are upright walking primates, and they are almost certainly to be, certain to be as hair-covered as primates are. In other words, they're hominoids. That, that's what one of the major parts of my book is uh, Everything You Know Is Wrong. It's about hominoids, which are, you know, again, Bigfoot, Yeti, and most people don't understand that they're, instead of those two types that everybody knows about, there are actually four types around the world. And the, you remember last week the big discussion was about a finger bone that they had found in Russia. Mm-hmm. And its mitochondrial DNA was unlike both human DNA and Neanderthal mitochondrial DNA. Now, what they're saying, what science is saying, well, then that means we've got ourselves another human, just like the hobbit. Mm. You know, hobbit, well, even though it doesn't look a thing like a human being, except it walked upright, it's another type of human being. Even though it looks like a chimp, even though it looks like Lucy, Mm. we're going to have to call it a human because it was walking upright and it was 17,000 years ago so that's got to be another kind of human this one 30,000 years ago and so they're saying well okay if it's upright it's 30,000 years ago I don't care how different it is from humans and Neanderthals it's got to be another kind of human (laughs) they will do anything to keep from saying well maybe it's a hominoid you know (laughs) maybe it's uh, maybe it's one of these creatures that people talk about and describe going back hundreds of years and all that look Russia is is the center of the the third kind, which is called the Almas, A L M A S, the Almas or the Almasti, and are the the Kaptar. They have other names for them, like we have multiple names, and every place in the world that has these creatures has their localized name for them. But the Almas, that's a finger bone of an Alma. You can bet it is. Mm. But they're not going to. Science is never going to allow that until. The same way we have now the opportunity to cram the star child down their throat and to, to resolve the alien UFO issue, there will one day be a capture or a killing of a, of a real true hominoid, and that will cram that down their throats. Hmm. But eventually, science is looking at two major avenues of destruction of the evolutionary theory, and that, especially as it applies to humans. And that is UFOs and aliens and hominoids. And, and both of those have the potential to take it down any single day that comes up. And we're trying, we're working hard to see that the day is going to come now where we're going to stand on the world stage and take it down with the Star Child's DNA. And someone else someday is going to do that with a hominoid as well. It's just a matter of where and when. All right, Lloyd Pye, uh, thank you so much for sharing uh, some of this update information. Very exciting. Again, the website is lloydpye.com. And uh, don't forget to check out that article then as well, Missing Link Found Again. And we'll see what the Telegraph and all the other news agencies uh, whip up here in terms of uh, this new discovery, so to speak. Uh, the book and, is what? Oh, go ahead. And also mention the starchildproject.com as Ab- well. Absolutely. Sites. Absolutely. Yeah. Starchildproject.com. That's the site to go to specifically get more information about the Starchild Project alone. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to mention as a, as a kind well, of a for those who want to, for those who want to educate themselves really quickly about the Star Child, I can recommend the Star Child ebook. It's called Star Child Skull Essentials. It's very inexpensive. It's it's ten U.S. dollars. Almost anybody can afford that. It's a it's a quick and easy download, and you, it, it's 125 illustrations with text boxes. It's very easy to read. It's very comprehensive. It gives you all the main facts that you can use to discuss this with people. People that that you might want to tell about it, and it will make you the smartest person in the room when it comes to discussing UFOs or aliens. If ever you find yourself in that kind of a situation, so uh, I, there's also a real book, a book book called The Star Child Skull, which tells you the whole backstory of how the information came to be, and you're certainly free to get that as well. But I just I just want people to make themselves aware of the information. Uh, as best they can, uh, an educated, you know, an educated uh, populace 
is you know is well informed and, and helps our cause all along the way. So we just want to get the information out as, as quickly and as widely as we can. Keep up the great work, Lloyd. Uh, Godspeed to you and your uh, team. And we hope to have you back, obviously, with a definitive answer on the star child and that uh, more and more will reveal itself here down the line here, Lloyd. Then. Absolutely. I'll let you guys know when we know. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming on, Lloyd.